we're, uh, we're going a little further on the discussion of a Christian's uh, stance or uh, ability to function within the world of Caesar. And uh, I don't want people confused regarding the purpose of the Bible and the understanding of man's laws. Man's laws, anything positive law, not natural law, natural law meaning God's law, the understanding of the Ten Commandments, and love thy neighbor as thyself, uh, that is the law. But when you step into Caesar's world, God has allowed him to be empowered to execute anything that has to do with this. Because this has to do with money, it has to do with uh, basically things that have nothing to do with God's original plan for man in the Bible. Man's law could have volumes of laws. And therefore, all that relates to only the secular name, which is the surname. So if we're talking about, say, Black's Law, Bouvier's Law, your local law, um, concise law dictionary, whatever it may be, there's many, many law books that are out there. Most of these are based on the history of man in civil law, criminal law, whatever it may be, common law. These laws were comprised to organize and to regulate man in participation over money, commerce, exchange, contracts, things of that nature. God's law was about love, was about no wealth, no secular gain. It had nothing to do with man. God did not intend man to have pockets with money. Adam was born naked and then man made his own mistake by sinning and touching something that didn't belong to him, property that was not his. Therefore, you could understand that man's sin position would have a given name which is God's property attached to something good, attached to something that is not good, something that's evil. The knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Christ is credit, the devil is debit. It's debt. And now if you only concentrate on the debt, which is how man's society regulates things, they're only referring to you under that name. Therefore, it's always Mr. Smith, Mr. Debtor, Mr. Noman. Noman is debtor. Therefore, the name, the arms has to do with debt. When you say that name, you're automatically a debtor and therefore you do not believe in the assurance of Christ. If you are involved in there and do not further understand that that debtor name means it belongs to Caesar, and therefore it's all his. To think it's yours, well, if you want to play to be a participant, individually sharing in that realm of thought, well, you can believe it's yours, but it still belongs to that as a whole. And whoever controls the commerce that runs this controls the use of that. And therefore, there'd be no reason to debate between your Christian name over on the biblical side and the surname on the other side because the surname is debt. It has to do with something an artifice, not real. It is the error of mankind from the beginning. Now we've become very, very um, controlled by it because as time went on, the debtors, the sinners became much more attuned to creating more debt and more sin. Therefore, the regulations had to get more strict. So eventually now we have a social insurance or a social security consent, voluntary application to proceed in commerce from spiritual love to wealth where I want gain. God versus mammon. This is not rocket science. But if you're in the combination of the two, which is very confusing, which we call a merger in law, a merger is based on putting two things together that don't belong. You can do it, but it doesn't mean it's right. It's like trying to mix oil and water. So therefore, when you put the two together, one is Caesar's, one is God's. To tell Caesar that you're going to operate with Caesar's name, which is the surname, and not Pam or his creditors, 
even if there is a eminent domain that required Caesar to pledge the titles or the surety or the surname to the creditors of the bankers for money that was lent to these empires for operating their colonies, you still have the obligation, if you're participating with that, to pay your share. It is a common share, a common name. That's why it's a common family name. Family meant debtor anyways, in the realm of what was used in civil law. So a Gentile family name meant slave or debtor. The Christian name on its own is a separate jurisdiction. That's for spiritual persons only, spiritual people that are going down only to seek first God's kingdom. This is Caesar's kingdom, Satan's world, his arrangement. He has every right to run his a crazy illusion until it implodes and the return of the landlord comes back to make sure that the meek will inherit the earth. But in the meantime, God has allowed them to have the power, not the throne, just the power. Their only throne is illusionary amongst themselves. These are Gentile 20 nations that are out there. And they believe in humanitarian, which says that man will fix his own problems. It will never happen. Man is at war. That's why Gentile names have animal symbols and war fixed into the symbolization of the use of the surnames. Look at the coat of arms and look at it. There are animal symbols in those coat of arms. That is a mark of a beast. You already have it. You may be very shortly made to confirm it in order to control or to pay your debt for what you buy and sell with that name. That is this distinction between the mark of the beast and those that are believers and set apart disciples of Christ. You may have been of the world, which is secular, godless, but now you're no part of it because you never were part of it. Your birth record even claims that and separates it. We're here to try to make a peaceful understanding. You may be persecuted for this belief because you're more likely going to run into problems with the ignorant participants around you, family members, friends, which you'll find out are really not truly your friends or those that are close to you because they do not agree with spiritual, they agree with wealth. And therefore they're taken down by their own conformity to actually something that has nothing to do with love, it has to do with money. Everything in the world you operate with has something to do with money and the control of it and how it operates with title. The book of Job tells us we are not to accept any man's person. Only man came up with personas beyond a given name. Your given name was God-given because God named man and then gave him the God-given right to name his children. We are very confused by religious authorities who are so involved in the idea of the money changing in the temple, medical authorities who are so involved in their own hierarchy of thought, money changing in the temple, the political side, money changing in the temple. There's where your problem is, the crossover between Christ and the devil, creditor, debtor. These videos, are giving you the information. What you have in Caesar's world will certainly, will certainly soon be cut and be left in a very bad demise. So what you have for the moment in that was to be given to the poor according to scripture. Sell everything you own and give to the poor. No, not give to a secular church. No, we're not soliciting you on this video to hand it to us. We have no interest 
we're resting right now with this information. We're not in an interest saying to do this. You must make your own decision individually to go and put it towards those in need, necessity. At that point, then you are walking on faith. But until you cut that loose, you will not be able to reach the spiritual level of, of uh, peace and uh, uh, level of uh, uh, concern for moving forward with good conscience. So uh, we hope that these, that these last videos um, are going to reach you in a direction that you will understand the division between good and evil, Christ the devil, creditor versus debtor. I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos.